I would like to end this complete course by talking about server components, which is a new concept in React at the time I'm making this video. And there is React 19 that is coming really soon with a bunch of new stuff. And basically they also removed a lot of hooks that we previously used in React. This is why I didn't necessarily make videos on every hook available because some of them are going to disappear. But React server component is a concept that is going to stay for a long time and for good reasons. So previously I created this server component that is using use query, um, use mutation, use query client coming from React query. And on the server side, I can do some operation that before I could only do on the client side. So in this short video, I would like to make an introduction to RSCs, RSCs for React server components. It's brand new in React 19 and it allows component to run only on the server. Why do we want to do that? Probably for some SEO reasons, you would like to have some static data rendered only on the server, but also to reduce the JavaScript bundle size on the client. So once the data is actually uh, generated, loaded on the page, it would stay there and it would be faster for every client to get the page with the data. So what is the basic usage of a server component? So far here, when you create a component, and here we got the server component, so far you are probably using use client because you want to use user state, you want to use um, uh, use effect, some hooks that are available only on the client side. If you want to turn your application into a uh, server side application, so with ser React server components, you need to remove this use client if you get it. Otherwise, by default, if you don't put anything, your component will be by default rendered on the server, which could um, lead to some confusion for some users because you think that the data is fresh, but the data is not fresh because it has been generated previously. And by the time you visit the page, it has not been generated. So basically by rendering components on the servers, RSEs can make your web app load faster, perform better, especially on slow network on some countries where they got very bad network. Okay, now we would like to understand the difference between server component and client component. So basically the server components handle the data fetching and processing. Okay, so here we can see that we got the function outside, okay, function outside of my main component function, okay. So when you have a function like this, it's going to be triggered on the server side. So by the time I'm rendering the page, the fetch is already done. On the client side, it's the opposite. While the client component manage interactions and UI updates, basically it's going to fetch the data and show here the loading state. So basically I have right now a loading state, which is here, but it's a bit useless for a uh, server side application, okay? Uh, in case you are not sure if you are on the server, you can use the use server exactly like the client, okay? Probably sometimes you would like to use only the server side component. You don't need to specify it, but if you specify the use client and use server in the same file, you can do this little trick. There is an advanced concept on server component. Remember previously we talked about um, suspense and actually the RSCs can be interleaved with client components with React Suspense. So we saw that we use Suspense here to call our lazy component, okay? This lazy component is on the server side. Remember here we've got a call here with wait for a promise and then we've got our lazy component rendered. It's exactly the same as what we've done here on the server component on the previous course on React Query. React Suspense helps you to suspend time to manage the server side rendering and it can improve loading times and user experience. On Next.js 13, if you want to try Next.js 13, I got a full course on my, on my YouTube channel. Uh, we fully support RSC, right? So developers are allowed to mix server and client components seamlessly. Okay, it optimizes a lot of stuff such as the performance and the SEO.
And at the end, I would like to treat a very common question, which is, do the children irritate from the parents? Which means, if I got a client component wrapping a server component, is all the server component will be client. Okay, so when a client component wraps a server component, the server component still executes this component on the server. However, for the client component, you must be careful because it manages the client-side interactivity and state as the server only output its static data and it does not change after the initial rendering. Let me give you an example. Here we are, we have actually a client wrapper and this client wrapper is actually containing my server component, which is just down there, okay? In this case, my server component will be rendered on the server side. But you gotta know, it's an important note, even though my server component run on the server, it can be wrapped by client wrapper. So it means that it handles dynamically behavior on the client side. And this pattern, guys, is really powerful, but it requires very careful state management. Additional point, and the final point, actually, of this lesson, it's that um, it highlights how server and client components interact when they are used together. We focus here on a specific scenario of client-side wrapping, which is crucial for advanced React application. But you can basically do what you want. You can use React and server component when you need them. It doesn't, um, it's not on a code level that you need to think about that, but more on a strategy of your product that you need to focus on. If you want to do fully SEO, probably you want to be on server side. If you want to do a React client application, you can use the client only.